We walk the trail of those who have walked before us. The names etched in the ether around us, names that kindle deep memories in us, inherited from every generation before us. The ancient star seeker who saw names in constellations, Abraham. The one who broke out in laughter at good news, Sarah. The stammering catalyst for liberation from Egypt, Moses and his sister who pulled him, them and us back on track, Miriam. Such are the ancients who now speak our names as we speak theirs, faithfully faithful, and in this great company of heaven, we worship. Hello, and thank you for the invitation to join you today as we worship together online. We join the, the, the heroes of the faith, the ancients of the ancients, and find their story tangled and wrapped up together in Hebrews, where the famous words, by faith, Abraham, by faith, Moses. And so, by faith, we tell their story and share in their journey, and all of us, of every generation, of every time and every place, come together, and by faith, and in faith, worship. Holy God, holy and compassionate, holy and faithful, may we gather in faith unbound, never captured by a creed, but living the adventure. May we gather in faith liberated, never controlled by religion, but alive in the doubts. May we gather in faith released, never limited by our understanding, but soaring into what is yet to be. In such faith, may we find new words for you and try out alternative understandings of you, opening ourselves to new experiences with you. Never a possession, always a process, unsure of where we are going, but going anyway. In that faith, may we shape your kingdom here, letting there be a trail of trials and disappointments left scattered behind us, each one faithfully tried and faithfully discarded, until we find the one that fits, encourages and brings life, 
and dare we hold on to it with all our strength. May we gather in faith, unshackled, never controlled by doctrine, but breaking out into resurrection once more. Hear us as we pray the global prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the ongoing story, the never-ending story of the faithful. Hebrews eloquently, in fine Greek, better than any other Greek in the New Testament, writes of the great chain of the faithful who by faith travelled into the yet concealed landscape called the future. Concealed from them because none of them ever arrive, yet by faith they set out. Hebrews is a book that is possibly a series of sermons or thoughts or ideas from one or more uh, than one person in the early church. And we explored this and its companion passages over the next three weeks, finding ourselves in that landscape where we know not how it all began, nor its future, yet by faith travel within it, trusting what we know and anticipating what we do not. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered himself faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Hebrews, <laughs> it's one of the reasons I tend to stop reading the Bible after the Gospels, because trying to explain the faith like a lecture has really never inspired me. I, I prefer a good story. However, it inspires others and it fascinates me how different we all are and indeed how we need each other to experience the, the fullness of the faith. Hebrews, however, is quite the speech. It is elegant, eloquent, poetic, and whoever wrote it has managed to speak quite sophisticatedly about the faith. Indeed, it may not be only one person, but a collection of early church sermons. Who knows? But Hebrews, while while not a story, expands the visuals of the stories of faith of the patriarchs focusing on a number of these guiding leaders from the Old Testament and uses their story to explain or at least explore the idea of faith. Now, it is in my blood to worry. I, I worry about the church, I worry about falling attendance, I worry about the state of society, politics, the world. It's part of the DNA of some folk, just to worry. And I 
worry that the future I see for the church is rather downbeat and I am genuinely fighting against that all the time. I want to live by faith more, believing that the way all the evidence points is not the way it is going to end up. And while reading around this passage for today, I came across what is known as the, the Stockdale Paradox. It's named after Admiral Jim Stockdale, who was a prisoner of war during the Vietnam War. He was asked how he was able to live through such a terrible experience. Others, seemingly younger and more fit, wound up dying in the prison, but he, older and less fit, survived. Stockdale noticed that the, the prisoners who were either completely optimistic or completely pessimistic had the most trouble surviving. It was the ones like him that combined the realism of the present with a long view of the future that finally made it out. And apparently that is how great companies approach their ongoing future. You must retain faith that you will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties, and at the same time, you must confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. I'm, <laughs> I'm good at the latter, the brutal facts of reality. I'm a doom merchant, and I rely on others in the company to be better at the former, believing into the future, and together we make the perfect partnership. And reading Hebrews 11 is rather good for me, and I hope it is for all of us, because my side of the equation, the pessimistic side, isn't so different from all these great pillars of the faith. Just listen to Abraham's story or Isaac's, or Moses. Really pay attention to these stories. The writer and theologian Frederick Bruchner wrote, had you been able to tap any of these people on the shoulder at any given point in their faith journeys and ask them how it felt to be specially chosen by God, their answers would likely have surprised you. They would have included dark nights of the soul, tough choices, unforeseen futures, and they would rarely, ever so rarely, hear from God or see any tangible sign from the Almighty that they were on the right path. Not long after Mother Teresa's death, it was discovered in her journals that she had spent most of her life, they seemed to us full of blessing in, in the way she would like she would kind of respond to those around her and that gracious love that she had. But most of her life she felt disconnected from the very God in whose name she worked. Hebrews poetically yet brutally admits these heroes of the faith lived under a promise, but that promise remained for them just that. They travelled to the future, but they did not quite arrive. They lived not so much by faith, but by the Stockdale paradox. Hold to the faith that you will prevail and confront the reality of where you are now. May that be where we are as a church, between these two. May we recognise the faith that is living between trusting the church into the future and facing the reality of the world now. In other words, the honest experience the incompleteness of it all. The pessimists and the optimists make a good team, both sides having something to add to the ongoing journey of faith.
Thank you for the invitation, as always, to, to join you in worship today. We'd like to invite you to all the activities that are happening in the life of the church. You'll find them in the bulletin, which you can receive by email or just download from the website at nkchurch.org.uk. And they are fine places where we can all meet. This week we have the guild and we have the coffee pot and we have daybreak and we have the midweek service and we have um, various activities coming up as well, leading to next week where we will be serving communion, formal communion in the church and we will have a form of communion here online as well. So maybe the option for bread and wine to be shared together online. So please do join us wherever you can, um, through Bible study, through the video, through um, our podcast, through the phone line. All these things are available. So please do spread the news that we are spreading the news in this way. So let's gather together those thoughts, those ideas, those longings, those concerns we have for the world and by faith and in faith, pray. Between our present reality of the world and that hoped for future, in that lacuna, we make our prayer. It feels like a world rife for the pessimist with so much limitless conflict in so many places. Places where our humanity feels broken in the casualties of war and conflict. Where is the fear of our leaders? Where is the sense of humanity in our presidents and ministers? Where is the humanity in our religions that paints everyone not like us less valuable than us? A world fit for the pessimist. But we pray with the optimist, daring to see beyond the present, that love has not given up on us, that truth will be spoken and lies will be outed, that we will grow out of this, become better people, learn from how we live now. So we gather with hope and in faith we make our prayer, hope filled and faith shaped for a new kind of peace that is not just the silence of war, a new kind of peace that is not just headlines gone quiet, a new kind of peace that sees your image in our neighbour. It is by faith we pray, by faith we hope, by faith we live, by faith define ourselves, by faith we name our present, and by faith we step into tomorrow. So be it. Amen.
peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the common life of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.